All right, so we got new items that have been developed and are ready for development, but we gotta prepare because we got a tank battle coming up. All right, let's get our units set up with our staff and our R&D. Let's get these guys to the right spots. We got a couple of gorillas, a spy, commando, commando, mechanic. All right, so let's get these guys in the combat unit. We don't have many soldiers, so it's not gonna take very long. Doctor, cook, doctor. All right, get these two cooks so we can get some goodies to eat. Got that food percentage getting up a little higher. We got an engineer, a guy who's gonna be good for getting us some shotguns developed. We got smoke grenades and rations getting developed. Let's get that spy in that unit. Uh, we don't have a very large intel team, but that'll change. Now let's get that doctor into the medical team. We're looking good as, as far as our staff is concerned. Now let's get all these weapons that we got these specs for. Let's get them developed. Smoke grenade, the M60, the ration, and the sonic eye. And big boss, we gotta get ready to fight a tank. Let's do it. You hear the music? The tank battle, T-72U. Let's, let's do it. Snake, that's an enemy tank unit. Either neutralize the soldiers or destroy the tank. Get them. Alright. I got you, Miller. Let's see what anybody has to say about this mission. Let's talk to Amanda. An enemy tank. Is there somewhere you can hide, boss? There are train cars, but they won't hold up against a gun like that. Even a freight train? Incredible. Mm, but they keep me out of sight. Temporarily. Use them to look for an opportunity to hit its treads or the fuel tank at the back. But Don't forget about that gun, huh? Or the soldiers. They may try to flank you. Right. You can also stop it by taking out all the soldiers. You can do it, Snake. Alright, so just like Amanda said, we can take out this tank by taking out all the soldiers around the tank. Now, I'm going to go with Snake and we're going to try to use the same strategy that we did when we first played that LAV tank. And we're going to get, I don't know what uniform to use, it really doesn't matter. Because we don't have all that much. Let's go with the Tiger Strike. Survival. Some classic MGS3 camo. And instead of the M16, oh, that's right, it didn't develop the M60 yet. Alright, so we'll keep the M16 on. I was gonna put the M60, but we're just now developing it. Uh, we got, we got the supply marker, right? Just in case we run out of ammo, we can call for some more. But hopefully, we'll be able to keep stealth. And we're looking good right here as far as our setup. Let's get this mission done. Go big boss. I saw a comment in one of the videos, well the last video before this, that said instead of running away from a tank that he sees coming over the horizon, big boss runs toward the fight. You know that's true. Let's do it. So like I said. Don't worry about the tank. Just focus on the troops. I'm going to try to keep the same strategy. I haven't seen you yet. Perfect. Now's your chance. As far as trying to maintain perfect stealth and taking these guys out. Now, if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, I think there's 10 enemies plus the captain that pops out at the end. Now, if I can be sneaky with it, and I'm talking about real sneaky with it, we can get some CQC going. Or maybe a hold up. Let's see if we can get this done. Freeze. Ah, oh, damn. Can't hold people up. Let's do it then. Next. Next. I'm gonna have to do a smoke bomb. Enemies Damn! Down. Oh, that didn't work. Alright, they're gonna toss grenades at me. Like Amanda said, we can use the train car the train cars to block, but I like to use these pillars right here. To protect myself. He blew his own teammate up, man! What the hell are you doing there, bro? I'm gonna kidnap these dudes real quick. Don't even worry about it. Oh, he killed them. There's one less person in my unit. We rumbling, we rumbling. Aw, oh, damn, don't blow me up, don't blow me up. So like I said, I think there's 10 guys in this area. I didn't do that sneakily at all. Go to sleep, go to sleep, you sucker. Oh god, oh god, you gonna fuck me up. Go to sleep, just take a nap. I ain't got enough bullets to be putting on your booty. Damn, damn, they're all around me. Where you going, sucker? You gonna run past me? I'm chasing you. I'm chasing. Get your bitch ass over here. Eat the wall. He's gonna blow me up with that train. 
He's gonna blow me up with the tank round. Don't do it to me. Don't do it. Ah. Nap time. Put that grenade down, ho. Let me switch over to some rations just in case it gets ugly. I'm surprised this dude has not tried to blow me up with the damn tank round. Come on, come on, come around the corner. What are you doing, big boss? I tried to CQC him as he came around that corner. Big boss decided he wanted to get his climb on. What the hell are you doing, big boss? Where did the second guy go? I don't know. We're gonna get your little punk ass. Uh. We definitely got enough Fulton rounds to deal with these guys. Let him go. He's not even trying to come get me. No, 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 no main cannon. No main cannon. Stop it. Don't be ho. That damn, that damn train car is coming my way. Oh, the train car is coming my way. Good God. Good God. Rumbling though. That's how you fight a tank with a train. Come on around that corner. Come around that corner, sucker. I saw you running. Where'd you go? That can't, he can't squish it against me any more than this. Oh, you standing right there like a punk? Come on around. Come on around, punk and stuff. I'm gonna slap you up. Oh, God. Switch over to the rations. This is not looking good. I think these are the last two dudes. Excuse me, excuse me. Don't tear me up too bad. Come on around the corner, punk. Oh, he did. Try to get me. Try to angle off of me. You little slut. You know what? You about to get it. You about to get it back. Oh, what the hell? Boy, tried to toss a damn smoke grenade off right off the top of my head. Where'd you go, you little hoe? Uh. Uh, can't see me, tank. I'm in the smoke. Ah, ah, ah. Stop tearing me up. All right, so now he's calling for cover. Yeah, these are the last two guys. Come on, come on. Shoot. Once you shoot, I'm going to chug up this dude right here. Mm, get chugged up. Once he says take cover and take this, usually he goes into a, a three burst with a tank cannon. And you can use that to take out the last two guys. Well, these are the last two guys. Now I got to take out, I think, two bars of the enemy tank's health. God damn, I took that to the fucking chest. I'm glad I didn't unequip my damn rations. Here, come on, you come with me, sucker. Uh, uh, uh. And your last boy is over here somewhere, right? All right, so now it's me, one on one with the tank. No more little enemies, no more little jabronis. Let's get our, let's get our ration out. Let's get our M16 out. Now we gotta take away bars from the tank's health. I'm gonna use that M16 to do that. Don't you, don't you point that at me. What your mom tell you about pointing? You trying to get a headshot on me? Get away from me, freak! I'm trying to get the tank down with the M16. There we go. There we go. Tear this thing up. Let's tear this thing up. Now we gotta drop down four bars. Two of those, uh, two of those double sets. We gotta drop down four bars for the enemy tank captain to come out. And then we'll be able to shrink him and bring him back to the unit and the tank back to the unit. Come on. Oh, maybe it was only three. Come on, come on. Can you take him down? Yeah, we can take him down, especially since he ain't moving, because I got his gas tank. Mm. Come on, come on, get him in the forehead. Oh, no, don't move. Oh, he slapped me with the tank turret. Don't blow me up. Stop it. Man, this is too damn hype, man. Ah, ah, ah. Stop it, I got my rations out, right? He's fucking me up with that damn turret. Stop it. You ho? Oh, don't run me over. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> it's ugly. It's ugly. He's got one more shot, though. He's about to go down. That time, you ho. The enemy leader's out cold. Holy shit. <laughs> it was ugly, but it was done. That's how you do it with a trank, baby. I should have been a little bit better with my stealth. Uh -uh! Slithering out like a fucking booger. Yo ass is going for a ride. Tank battle T-72-U or T-72U is complete. And I will take that victorious music, I will take that S rank, baby. It got ugly there, man, because I intended to get in the smoke and try to hold these dudes up, but I completely forgot, I haven't played this game in a minute, as far as the tank battles, but you can't hold these dudes up in the smoke in these boss battles. So, uh, it was ugly. And then I tried to I tried to get these guys taken out with consecutive CQC, that didn't work, but luckily I was able to weave and juke and dodge bullets. Snake. The truck is headed up the mountain road past the tunnel. So it was nukes after all. What now? Their main base is up ahead. I better hurry after them then. But... Kaz, if I don't get moving, it'll be too late. All right. I guess you never did let dangerous assignments or risk aversion get in your way. How do I get inside the mountain? I can forget about the tunnel. Yeah, the tank took care of that. Any other routes? Why don't I let a local expert take over? 
Nick, you need a way into the mountain? Yeah, got one. Mm, let's see. Uh, do you remember that precinct I was in? In the village, right? Right. Go back to the village and head north. There is a bridge that connects to the mountain road. It crosses over a gorge. That's probably the best way. But there is a little problem. The path heading north from the village is barricaded. You might have to break through. Got it. The heart of Irasu. That's where the enemy's base has got to be, Snake. And maybe... Now, let me guess. The Basilisk, oh. You don't believe me, do you? No, I mean... We'll have to see. Snake, Inazu features a number of crater lakes. The Odeberg government had planned to use those lakes to construct hydroelectric plants as one of its big state development projects. The project was scrapped, but there's still a small opening at the bottom of the lake. Meaning? I checked the satellite imagery, but didn't see anything man-made, which means they probably built a base inside the mountain. Could just be a storage igloo for explosives, or maybe some kind of research facility. What do they hope to accomplish by bringing the nukes there? First things first. Get past that barricade north of the village. Looks like the only way through is the noisy way. You'll have to blow it up. So we got a new function, we got trading. So what basically what that is, is you can trade your staff, the people that you kidnap and the soldiers that you have in your unit, you can trade people, you can trade staff with other people online, but we're not gonna do that right now. Basically, we're gonna go and set up our staff so that our unit is looking as best as it can be. Let's get these mechanics and R&D team. And like I was trying to say before, Miller interrupted me at the end at that boss battle, man. It was just looking ugly. I tried one strategy. It did not work at all. It was looking pretty bad, honestly. But I was able to, to kind of dodge bullets, dodge tank missiles, take explosions, and kind of get what I needed to get done. And that was that S rank on that tank battle. So now we need to go blow up the way to get into the heart of Irazu. And we got... What did I do wrong? I was just mindlessly doing that while talking. I wasn't really concentrating. So we don't have enough GMP to develop that supply strike marker. We're gonna get these... We're gonna get this curry going though. And the Fulton system we should be able to get done once we get finished with the next mission that we're gonna do. So we're looking good. Our unit is set up. Our staff is set up. Let's just go check I would not really check database, but I kind of want to get that new thing off. But I don't... Fuck it. Let's go launch another mission. Alright, so the next main op that we have is to destroy the barricade. So we need to go find the truck carrying the nuclear warheads. But we got a whole lot of other missions, outer ops, extra ops, excuse me, that we haven't done yet. If I'm right, Fulton Recovery is the one we haven't done, so let's get that one done. Here's a rundown of your mission. This one's perfect for a warm-up. Nice and easy. Don't let yourself get lazy, though. Stick to it and get the job done. All right, so we got to use Fulton Recovery to retrieve all the enemy soldiers. Let's see if we got some briefing files that we can go over right here. We're going to talk to Amanda about Nicaragua. Since it was founded, my country has not once been able to choose its own path. First Spain, then America. Over 100 years of this. I know. In the 19th century, an American mercenary named William Walker seized power in Nicaragua. I'd heard he exploited rivalries between the political parties. Even after we expelled him, the Americans sent in their Marines under the pretext of quelling political unrest. And the real reason? To intimidate the government and thwart the construction of the Nicaragua Canal. I thought the U.S. already has the rights to build a canal in Nicaragua. They never intended to build a canal there. They'd already started digging in Panama. A canal in Nicaragua would break up the Panama Canal's monopoly. Reason enough for America to stick its nose into our affairs. They snagged the rights so nobody else could build there. It was General Sandino who finally stood up to Los Yankees.
General Sandino waged a guerrilla war against the Marines, at last driving them out. He was a true hero, and to us Sandinistas, like a father. But when they pulled out, the Americans left us something to remember them by. The National Guard. Yes, La Guardia. In name, a peacekeeping force. But in reality, Commander Somoza's personal army, answering to no one else. Unable to stay silent, General Sandino went to protest and was assassinated by Somoza as he made his way home. It was then that Somoza and Los Sapos began to eat our country alive from the inside. It has been 40 years since the Somoza family became the rulers of Nicaragua. With La Guardia at their command, no one can challenge them. You came here on the run from the National Guard, right? See, si. They took everything. Our land, our homes, our jobs. Now belong to Somoza. See, si. The law, too. He's even got the judges in his pocket. You defy him, you face death. Everyone bows at scrapes before La Guardia. Even then you might get a beating if they are in a bad mood. And you're trying to change things. That's not all. These Samosas have used their power to line their pockets. They confiscate people's land and hand it to members of the Samosa family. By now, close to half the farmland in Nicaragua is theirs. We were powerless until... You remember the earthquake two years ago? Yeah. I heard the capital was hit pretty hard. We lost Managua, our capital city. People sent aid from all around the world. Tears of sorrow turned to tears of joy. Yet almost all of it was embezzled by the Semosas. They sold out those who'd lost everything for money. They feasted on our country's suffering. Public resentment is at the boiling point. The Somoza's days are numbered. We will see to it. The first Somoza was originally no more than the commander of La Guardia. Ordinarily, a man of his station could never hope to become president. But the president at the time had no power to back him. The only one with the strength to oppose him was General Sandino. No, better to say the general was the only one who dared oppose him. There was nothing special about him. Above all, it takes a strong will to see justice done. That is what he taught us. Mm -hmm. It's also what motivated Somoza to have him killed. Yes. The rest was easy. He got rid of the president, taking office in a sham election. And once he had the power, he never gave it up. Talk about heavy-handed. He had the Americans backing him, that's why. They didn't want to hand over power to a rebellious general. Even so, it's hard to believe Washington would give its blessing to a guy like that. The American president at the time put it this way. Somoza may be a son of a bitch, but he's our son of a bitch. In other words, Better a dog or los sapos than an anti-U.S. regime. The Managua earthquake struck two years ago, the day before Christmas Eve. Giant cracks opened up in the streets. Sleeping children were crushed in collapsing houses. No chance to escape. No visit from Santa Claus. Thanks to Samosa, the old houses could not even get rebuilt. It was a nightmare. I heard the epicenter was right in the middle of the city. Even today, it's too dangerous to build on top of the fault line. The city center is still in ruins. And to make things worse, Somoza stole the recovery money. We must not fail. We owe it to those who lost their lives. We will defeat Somoza. All right, so we learned a little bit about Amanda and her reasons that she's trying to fight her revolution. Let's talk to Miller about a great leader. So I hear Amanda mistook you for Che Guevara, Snake. That's not too bad, huh? Yeah, right. I'm not even worthy of polishing his boots. Don't be so modest. From where I'm standing, your men see you as a great man. <laughs> as great as the century's most complete human being. That's Sartre, right? Well, there's hardly been a more iconic figure of his times than Che. Oh, he was more than that. He was a true revolutionary and a great warrior. I'm with you there. Can you believe that when he first went to Cuba with Fidel, they had only 12 guys with them? But they rallied. They brought in new recruits. 
won the support of the peasants, expanded their organization. And in the end, they overthrew the Batista regime. People flocked to them because they were honest. They won because they were strong. Those are the qualities that make men great. You know, we're kind of in the same boat they were back then. Here we are, a handful of mercenaries taking on an army backed by the United States. Yeah, we've got a long way to go. <laughs> but we've got to keep on going. It's not just about winning in battle. You need to think about recruiting people and growing this operation. Got it. Boss, did you ever read Che Guevara's book, Guerrilla Warfare? I can't remember if I got to that one or not. You should have. That's why I lent it to you. A lot of the guerrilla tactics it covers apply to sneaking missions, too. Che was one of the first people to articulate the theory of guerrilla warfare. T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, was another one. And Mao Zedong and his On Protracted War, theory aside, Nicaragua's General Sandino was one of the first to put guerrilla tactics into practice, which explains why the Sandinistas named themselves after him. If you think about it, guerrilla warfare itself has been around since ancient times. There's only so many ways a small group can upset a large army. There was a samurai in Japan who excelled in guerrilla warfare. No kidding. Tsunoki Masashige. He was a warrior who lived in the medieval era. He used unconventional tactics to help overthrow the Kamakura shogunate. Like what? Trojan horse style maneuvers and decoys to confuse the enemy. The best one was when the enemy was climbing the castle walls. He dumped boiling water and human excrement on them. Huh. Sounds great. Let's put it in the MSF playbook. You're not serious, are you, boss? Why not? We've got plenty of crap to unload. Uh, yeah. I'll think about it. You gonna toss Dookie on people, big boss? The year the Cuban Revolution was won, Che visited Japan as a member of an economic delegation. While he was there, he visited Hiroshima. Hiroshima? Since he was there to discuss economic issues, Hiroshima wasn't part of the original itinerary. Some said the Ministry of Foreign Affairs didn't want to let him go, but he went anyway. He snuck out of his hotel and took an overnight train. Huh. Traveling guerrilla style. Sounds like Che, all right. He visited the Peace Memorial Museum and the Atomic Bomb Survivors Hospital. Apparently, it gave him quite a shock. As a doctor, it must have been painful for him to see how the victims suffered. Nukes destroy everything. He was quoted as saying, they put you through this, and still you do whatever America says. Those words really hit me hard, especially when I think of my mom. He said something else, too. Let us all love Hiroshima and its people. I can believe it. Che never managed to numb himself to other people's pain. That's why people loved him, and why he died. That bandana you're always wearing. That thing's a real antique. Ever think about getting a new one? This one's fine. Come on, we can't have our boss wearing a raggedy old thing like that. It was a gift, okay? It wouldn't be right to get rid of it. It was. Okay, then. Speaking of which, Chase supposedly had a black scarf he used to take everywhere with him. A scarf? One of his comrades gave it to him when he broke his arm in battle. Che used that silk scarf as a sling. And the comrade who gave it to him became his second wife. A lady, all right. Even after his arm healed up, he never went anywhere without that scarf. What about you? You get that bandana from someone special? No, nothing like that. It's... it's important to me. That's all. He kind of stole that bandana from the boss when she tossed his ass off that damn bridge in the virtuous mission. All right, so we got all the briefing that we need as far as getting some information on how Snake is a little similar to El Che. Now let's set up for this mission right here. Really don't need much set up for this mission. I'm gonna go with Alligator. We're gonna get this started. You need to use Fulton Recovery on all the soldiers. Be careful not to kill anybody. All right, so this should be a pretty easy mission. All we gotta do is put suckers to sleep and then kidnap them. We got four dudes in this area. Ooh, I forgot about you being up there. I probably could have went up there and pulled him down using some CQC. Let's kidnap this dude. And yo, 
your ass is gonna get CQC'd. You like that wall? Does it taste good? Confirmed on board helicopter. You had a tank in your side, baby. Alright, so we got everybody sleeping. Let's kidnap these two dudes, climb up the ladder, and get the last guy, and then that's it for this mission right here. This, Fulton recovery helicopter is complete. This Fulton recovery mission. I forgot if there's anything. Yeah, Fulton there is somebody in here. Subject confirmed on board helicopter. Got us a nice little prisoner. And those huh. dudes, like I said before, have better skills than these random patrolmen, so it's always good to kidnap them. Let's get that dude. Let's get the extraction point. And we're done. Hey, that was great. Can't wait to see what else you can do. Extra Ops 11 is complete. Oh yeah, give me that S rank, baby. We're a fair ways off from getting rank 3 on that... Well, level 3 on that, Mark 22, but we got that as rank, so we'll take that. We got four suckers and one prisoner. And a new uniform that we got developed. Oh, we got a whole lot of stuff. Everything's getting unlocked.